Do you want to continue and give up for adoption or do you want to terminate the pregnancy? And this young woman chose to continue the pregnancy. And I was like, our paths going forward are going to be so different. It's going to be so hard for her as a teenage pregnant mom to get through high school, college, mm-hmm. etc. And I would go on to, you know, MIT. That's Sophia Yen, MD, and this is the Powerful Ladies Podcast. Hey guys, I'm Kara Duffy, a business coach and entrepreneur on a mission to help you live your most extraordinary life by showing you that anything is possible. People who have mastered freedom, ease, and success, who are living their best and most ridiculous lives, and who are changing the world, are often people you've never heard of until now. Never in my lifetime did I think that Roe v. Wade would be in jeopardy. The fact that we're still having debates about a woman's right to choose and to have full autonomy over her body, including access to health education and birth control, is shocking and disturbing. Today's guest, Dr. Sophia Yen, is on a passionate mission to ensure every woman who wants birth control can not only have access to it, but also have it conveniently delivered to her door. As the CEO of Pandia Health, Dr. Yen is the only female-founded, female-run, and doctor-led birth control delivery company in the U.S. In this episode, we discuss all things on the path to women's empowerment and liberation and how birth control is a must-have piece of that plan. Well, welcome to the Powerful Ladies Podcast. I'm so excited to talk to you today. Thank you so much for having me here. Let's tell everybody right away who you are, where you are, and what you are up to in the world. Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Sophia Yen. My mom said, claim all your titles. So ladies, claim all your titles. (laughs) um, I am the CEO and co-founder of Pandia Health. We are the only doctor-led, the only women-founded and women-led company in birth control delivery. Some of our competitors may have done what I call women washing, which is they swap their CEO out. But I think it's really important that we put our money where our values are. So ask, who is the founder? Who is the CEO? Who owns 50% of the company and is going to get you know the profit from it? But also, what are the values that this company was built on? And so about six years almost now, coming up in March, uh, started Pandia Health with a bunch of other people because as a woman, as a doctor, I wanted to make sure we had all the elements there before we went on this journey. So we had a pharmacy founder, we had a physician founder, myself, we had my sorority sister who was leading up all things that I didn't want to do. We had a marketing, we had a CTO, and we also had my original instigator, Pearl and me, who's just a networker, done startups before, et cetera. And so five out of six were women. And three out of them happened to be from the same sorority, but different colleges. Uh, two of us from MIT. So we just claim, you know, all sorts of backgrounds. And started this because I was giving a talk to a bunch of physicians. The number, one of the top three reasons why women don't take their birth control is they didn't have it in their hand. And my friend Pearl and E and I were like, we can solve this. We will just ship it to you and keep shipping it to you until you tell us to stop. (laughs) And then, yeah, we ran ads for free birth control delivery. And 60% of the people that responded didn't have a prescription. And I'm like, don't you know, in the United States, you need a prescription if you want the birth control pill, patch, or ring. And I'm a doctor. I can write prescriptions. And thus, Pandia Health was born. If you need just the delivery, you tell us where your your medication's at, what pharmacy, or your doctor can Mm -hmm. send it right in. You give us the front and back of your insurance card, or we take credit card if you don't have insurance. And then we ship it to you and keep shipping it to you until the prescription runs out. And two months before the prescription runs out, we're like, go see your doctor, get a refill. That way you don't have that last minute. Oh my gosh, I ran in my post. Can you believe calling in like panic and stress for everybody involved? Mm -hmm. And then if you need a doctor, then we have expert birth control doctors. And I think it's so important for people to realize that somebody who does something a lot is going to be much better than somebody who does it once in a while. So I personally wrote 2,000 birth control prescriptions over two years, 
and then looked at the side effects by race, and then also being adolescent medicine and aware of body mass index of age. And so I think we are the best possible care if you're new to birth control. If you have something you like, we just keep you on it. We might Mm -hmm. be like, oh, that estrogen's a little low for your bone density. You might want to bump it up, but we're not going to make you change if you love what you love. However, if you're Mm -hmm. new, I think that we're going to result in fewer side effects. Very cool. Well, you covered so many things in that share, which are important and powerful. And I really want to go back to like, why is birth control and getting it to women so important to you? I was, you know, pre-med back in high school and I was a volunteer at Planned Parenthood giving out um, pregnancy tests. So it was fun to run from the chemical side, those pregnancy tests. But um, I ran a test at age 15. I was 15 volunteering, trying to get into college, put it on my resume, (laughs) a test for a 13 year old. And it came back positive. And I was like, oh, crap, you know, this is just going to be bad no matter what. And there's no undoing what's been done here. And and she, you know, decided to continue the pregnancy because at Planned Parenthood, we give them all the options. You know, do you want to continue the pregnancy? Do you want to continue and give up for adoption? Or do you want to terminate the pregnancy? And this young woman chose to continue the pregnancy. And I was like, uh, our paths going forward are going to be so different. It's going to be so hard for her as a teenage pregnant mom to get through high school, college, Mm -hmm. other education, et cetera. And I would go on to, you know, MIT, UCSF, uh, Children's Oakland, back to UCSF, then Berkeley, and then Stanford, now CEO and founder of a company. What Mm -hmm. totally different paths. And if we'd been able to give her comprehensive sex ed, if we had been able to provide to her free birth control, and lastly, if we'd given her the confidence to be like, no, I don't need to have sex right now because I got other things to do. Or if I'm going to have sex, I'm going to make sure there's like no chance of getting pregnant. I'm doing birth control plus condoms. And with that combination, it's a very low occurrence of anybody getting pregnant. If you do both Mm -hmm. and hormonal method and the condom, but even now we have IUDs and implants, which beat vasectomy and tubal ligation. So there's just so much good birth control and there's no reason that anyone should get pregnant. And unless you want to, (laughs) and, um, and, and I just want to help anybody that wants to prevent unplanned pregnancy, uh, to do that because it, it impacts one gender more than the other. The other mm-hmm. side says, oh, I'll help you, blah, 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 but they can walk away. You can't yeah. walk away because you're the one that's pregnant. Well, and, and it's it's not just the idea of like having to take care and raise a child after. It's the, what it does to your body, what it does to your trajectory, as you mentioned. Yes. Um, and I saw a great you know, meme the other day on Instagram about how a woman can only have one child a year. But a man can inseminate endless number of women in in a year, let alone a day (laughs) if they so so chose. Yeah, and And, (laughs) yeah, and so much pressure is on women to manage this and figure it out, and yet we don't make it easy for women to do so. Exactly, and we calculated women spend ten weeks of their lives going to the pharmacy. (coughs) waiting for the medication and coming back home. And I'm all about hashtags. So hashtag better things to do. Spend that 10 weeks on the beach, spend that 10 weeks getting a massage, reading a book, taking a nap, um, bubble bath, whatever makes you happy. So everything else came in the mail. We're like, why not birth control? And certainly there's always been mail order pharmacies, but they're focused on gray haired people with drugs, you know, six times a day. We are something that women need from two years. Well, after from your first period until 50. And Mm -hmm. I purposely chose Pandia, the Greek goddess of healing light, full moon. And I'm all about women's empowerment, goddess and beauty and, and appreciating ourselves and then made up the definition, pan is every and dia is day. So we want to take care of you every day, set it and forget it, let us worry so you don't have to. We call that hashtag Pandia peace of mind. <laughs> I love I love that you're thinking about not just how to solve these problems, but the whole story behind it. So, you know, there are such controversies around women's reproductive health. 
when is it just going to be that's the options we give people? My philosophy is that the United States was built on freedom of religion. And your body, your religion, my body, my religion, you to force your religious interpretation on my body is not okay. I am not a second class citizen. And just because I was raped, I should not be forced to carry anything to term. And you should have no say about anything that happens to my body. I am not a cow. I am not a, you know, thing that you gestate in my body, my choice, your body, your choice. And you have every right to try to convince me to do whatever the heck you want, but to put it in law and to force me under law to do what you want is slavery. And Mm -hmm. I will not know, you know, and we as women should pull, um, I think it's called listriata or something like that, where no sex. If we withhold sex, men probably will do what we ask them to do. And so the hard part about birth control and um, abortion is that abortion mainly, you don't think about it until you need it. And that mm-hmm. is rare. Not, I mean, it happens in one out of four women, but just like everybody's ashamed, nobody wants to talk about it, blah, 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 blah. Birth control, I think we need to acknowledge, has totally allowed women to achieve equality. I like to say you literally have to be a saint to get through college, uh, uh, grad school, and more and not get pregnant, right? Because if you get pregnant mm-hmm. in that process, it makes it a lot harder. And the burden lies on us. And it, mm-hmm. it affects those of us who have uteri. So birth control has leveled the playing ground. And what we're also doing at Pendia Health is thought leadership. So I realized trying to get pregnant that the only reason we bleed every single month is because we didn't get pregnant. So we build up that lining every month. And we're like, embryo? Oh, no embryo, bleed. And then we build it up again. Embryo? No embryo, bleed. And we do that from age 12 and a half to 26 on average, or for those of us who took longer to find a significant other, had more school, 35, pop out two kids-ish, and then mm-hmm. until 50. And so all this bleeding is unnecessary. And you can use the IUD, the implant, the pill to patch the ring, not for birth control, but for menstrual regulation. And how much better would women's lives be without one week out of four randomly hit by blood and always worrying about it, but also decreasing our hemoglobin, our energy, increasing our risk of ovarian, endometrial, colorectal cancer every time we build, pop out an egg and bleed. And so it becomes no longer birth control. It becomes hormonal treatment and we've taken away that stigma. So until we can you know, resolve the stigma of birth control, We can at Mm -hmm. least approach it from menstrual regulation, hormonal treatment, because the number one cause of missed school and work under the age of 25 in the US of A, not just third world countries, is horrible, painful, really heavy periods. And whenever Mm -hmm. I give a talk to a bunch of women, like 30 women, three of them will come up afterwards and be like, my periods are horrible. I can't go to work and I can't explain it to my male boss at, you know, Facebook, Apple, um, Netflix, and Google, why I'm late or why I can't go. And it's like, goodness, if this is happening to you, please see a doctor because we have the technology to take care of that. And a lot of women are like, well, it runs in my family. My mom has it. My sister has it. My aunt has it. My grandma has it. So it's just supposed to be natural. And I was like, it runs in my family to be blind, but I wear glasses. It runs in my family to have horrible allergies but I take my allergy (coughs) medicine so I can breathe. So please, if you are missing school or work or know anyone missing school or work, see their doctor, use birth control, not for birth control, but hormonal treatment. And if we start this two years after your first period, so 14 and go your whole life, then it won't be a a stigma. It won't be an issue. And really, um, yeah, I think that that is one approach. Are there any negative consequences to skipping periods and and using the hormonal regulation of birth control that way? Yes. So the main thing is you do have a slightly higher exposure to estrogen. And the question is, does that increase your risk of breast cancer? But they've actually done long-term research of women on birth control because it's been out since the 1960s. So it's been 60 years now, which is relatively Mm -hmm. new 
in the things of life. But for young people that are 20, that's three times their lifetime that has been out there. And I like to do things in lifetime. It's kind of fun. And, um, and so with all that data, they've shown that the decrease in ovarian, colorectal, and endometrial cancer outrisk the slight increased risk of breast cancer. Certainly, if you personally have breast cancer, then no one would suggest that to you. But if you have mm-hmm. a family history of breast cancer, it, you know, you have to take it into consideration. But regardless, um, one out of eight women, I believe, is going to get breast cancer. And like most of that is not genetic. It's just mm-hmm. a random kind of mutation. So uh, again, the take-home message is the decrease in ovarian endometrial colorectal cancer is much greater than the increase in breast cancer. Mm-hmm. And for people who have been on birth control for a long time and they do want to get pregnant, does it take a while to be able to get pregnant after you've been on it for years? Yeah. So the answer is no. So the way that we know that birth control leaves your system within three days is that's why you have the withdrawal bleed. The way that the pill, the patch, the ring work is you usually have three weeks of medicine and then you have one week of sugar pills, which is a drop in the hormone. And the reason you bleed is because the hormone dropped and it's out of your system. So it is absolutely you know out of your system by day three because you're bleeding. But if you want like zero trace of it, you have to go out five half lives. So by a week. It's Mm -hmm. out of your system. And I actually gave a talk to um, some fertility specialists in Taiwan. And I'm like, why am I giving a birth control talk to fertility specialists in Taiwan? And they shared with me that actually they use birth control for infertility. And again, it's not, you know, it's hormonal treatment. And what it is is one in 10 women will develop this thing called polycystic ovarian syndrome during your lifetime. And those women don't pop out eggs. And if you don't pop out eggs, then you can't make a baby. And so the fertility specialist will put these women on birth control because their hormones are whack and the Mm -hmm. birth control will calm down their hormones. And then these women with PCOS hear, oh, I'm going to have a hard time getting pregnant when I want to get pregnant. But actually, right when you come off the birth control is the most normal you're ever going to be. And the hormones are just going to get wackier and wackier. So as soon as you come off of that as a PCOS, Two weeks later, you know, you have your period and seven days after that, assuming you have a seven day period, you know, 14 days after the first day of your period, that is the time to get pregnant. That is when you're most fertile. And so actually being on the birth control pill is used for infertility. And, you know, two weeks after is the best time to go get pregnant. The thing that shocked me growing up is how little we are told as women about how our bodies actually work and what we should expect and what's normal and what's not normal. And just the, comp- the lack of telling us how our machinery works. And of course, this is non-gender and also applying to like how our brain functions and everything else. But women in particular, like why are we not talking about what, how long the cycle is or how it actually works? Like we're told to use you know, tampons, and that's about it. And it's so frustrating that we have lost not just all of this ancient wisdom women have had across cultures and generations, but we've also lost connection with the science of what's actually happening. Yeah, no, it makes me very frustrated to hear that, you know, even the liberal state of California, we used to only have, um, if you teach sex ed, it has to be medically accurate. And so it would be the liberal districts that teach it and make sure it's medically accurate. But then the conservative districts would not teach it at all. And only recently have they required sex ed. And even then, it's only like right before your first period, maybe in seventh or eighth grade, and then again in high school. Whereas in Canada, I love the Canadians. They're so crazy progressive. They teach it every two years starting kindergarten. And my Mm -hmm. Canadian friend even said that their principal taught them how to put in a tampon. And I was like, whoa, because in the United States, it varies on what your your education is and what they decided to teach, how much they decided to teach, if they even mention tampon. Um, in I'm part of, you know, pediatrics and the American Academy of Pediatrics. There's different books on puberty. They're very rarely mentioned tampon. They're like, there are tampons and pads. Go talk to your mom. Whoa. Yeah. Really? Like, and mm-hmm. I know there are ethnic differences in tampon use. That's another like passion project of mine that at my clinic at Children's Oakland, at the clinic at UCSF, at the clinic at Stanford that I've worked at, 
I'd say it's like 80% of Caucasians use tampons and 1% of Latinas, Blacks, and Asian. And I try to teach people that there's nothing about in the book of Asian that says you will not use a tampon. It's simply educating the parent that you know the tampon going into the vagina is not affecting her virginity, that we need mm-hmm. to define virginity as having something up your private part for sexual pleasure and ideally of volition, because I think people who are sexually assaulted should still be able to claim virginity. And it, why do we even care about that? We should instead mm-hmm. just celebrate your first orgasmic sex. That's what we <laughs> should go for. But for those people that are caught up in virginity to know that, you know, the tampon does not affect your hymen. The hymen is not like a, a, a web, you know, or a cribiform plate, as we call it. And so poking the tampon through will not do anything. There are other things that can affect the hymen. It is really ridiculous to check the hymen. So um, know that there are ethnic differences in tampons. Know that we absolutely should follow Canada's model of every two years starting age five, because Young boys find their private parts at age five. And it's all Mm -hmm. known in pediatrics that the young five-year-old male will masturbate. And so you should discuss that and say, it's fine to touch yourself, just not in public and not, you know, just not in public. But also we should talk about that for those of us with uteri too, masturbation Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. understanding our basic function. And then the other interesting new topic in sex ed is those without uteri should know about it too. I talked to my friend who sent her um, kids to Catholic school and I was like, oh, that's going to be horrible education. But they actually taught the young men that women will have periods. And if you see that she has a bleeding spot, be a gentleman, go, (laughs) you know, and offer your sweatshirt or jacket to cover it up, which I thought was adorable. Yeah. Well, it also breaks down this um, gender taboo of what we can talk about when we can't because the second you become a parent, like it doesn't, you, everyone has to talk about it anyway. But until then it's like, oh no, 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 that's that conversation. This is this one. Like, it's amazing to me that, um, people just don't know. And it actually has led to some really interesting conversations in my life with men in my life who are like, wait, what's going on? And I'm like, how do you not know what this is? Like you're an adult you've dated women, you have sisters. How do you not know that this is how it works? And it's shocking to me. It's like, it's, it's, um, even knowing like when people can get pregnant, when you can't, like, it's shocking to me how little information is known among women, but also just known across the board for adults who should know these things because it's, it's very important for making any sort of life choices. Yes. It's your body and you should know how it works. Yeah. Crazy idea that is. <laughs> Do you see progress happening in um, sex education and access to, to birth control changing and getting easier for people or based on some of the things that are happening politically lately? Do you, Is it still a challenge and especially for your business to get to everyone that you want to? I think politically, it's really scary to me because I do think this uh, next case that's coming in front of the Supreme Court has the opportunity to reverse Roe v. Wade. And that is what the people that are anti-birth control, anti-women, anti-abortion have wanted. And they've stacked the courts where it's six conservatives versus three people that might support, that definitely the three, would support a woman's right to decide what happens to her body and trust a woman with bodily autonomy and trust a woman to make decisions that we are not a child and we are not property. Mm -hmm. Um, So I am very concerned for this country um, that if they reverse it and everybody's saying they will, abortion will immediately become illegal in 21 states. 21 states. And then there's five states that are hostile and I thought Ohio was liberalish, but Ohio is also going the route of Texas where anybody can sue anybody. Like you tell on your neighbor and you get $10,000, you know, and like I can see some kid who just going to tell on everybody, you know, and, mm-hmm. and then women are going to be stuck in this world where you can't tell anybody anything and live in fear. And just the burden lies on those of us with uteri and it's not okay. And, and it scares me because I feel it's too late. There are things we can do. There is um, the Women's Protection Act. And if we can get that passed, that would be key. Um, there's also the ERA. Um, we've never passed the ERA in the United States. And I think it just takes like one technical thing to do it. 
And because we've already had all the states ratified that need enough states ratified that need to ratify it. But that can also protect reproductive rights and abortion rights. And certainly we need to make sure that we ask all elected officials where they stand on abortion and women's reproductive rights and birth control. So make sure you vote, make sure you donate, make sure you get out the vote, make sure you tell people this is my body, my choice, and this is an issue you cannot compromise on. You will not. And we should not allow, and we should have marches, and we should withhold sex, and we should boycott people. I've told my daughters, and they know, and we need to tell all the conservative states, you want my daughter? My daughter's brilliant. You want her to go to your Mm -hmm. college? She's not going to your college in your state, because if she gets sexually assaulted, there was like, I think on the books in Georgia, if you leave the state of Georgia, get abortion, and you come back, they can arrest you when you come back in. And I was like, well, my daughter's not going to Georgia. (laughs) My daughter's Mm -hmm. not going to Texas. Or like, it's just, you need to think about this as people with uterine. You need to think about this as parents. If your daughter gets sexually assaulted, and I think the stat is like one in four college women will get sexually assaulted. If she wants to decide what she wants to do, you can't let her go to any of these 26 states. Mm Mm-hmm. Because because they'll arrest her on the way back and, and that would not be it. She's already been raped. How, how, how awful to add that, you know, onto that situation. For my company, we purposely um, have not taken on the medication abortion thing. We've had a lot of people push us to go that way. But I was like, I can't risk my company getting sued or any of my doctors mm-hmm. losing their licenses because some anti-abortion, rabid, anti-woman person just wants to sue us or screw us or something mm-hmm. like that. Um, And I purposely made it such that we are doing not just birth control, but eventually we're adding on acne, we're adding on menopause, we'll deliver all your drugs. So again, you never have to run to the pharmacy, hashtag better things to do. So they can't shut us down specifically, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Um, The main thing that has limited our growth is investment. So Mm -hmm. I hope anybody who wants to support reproductive rights and knows people who have money, come our way, give us money, please. Um, we would love your investment. Um, it's frustrating to see male founded, male led birth control companies, money just falls from the sky and the only women founded and women led the only doctor led company in birth control delivery, having to go around and beg for money and having a difficult time. Um, so please join groups like there's different angel groups that don't, that invest in women. There's also CEO, which is a nonprofit that pools together money to invest in women with a uh, no interest loan. And they gave us $100,000 and we have to pay it back with no interest. But it's so awesome mm-hmm. to have that community support us and um, and know that there's like uh, crowdsourcing investment opportunities, et cetera, that you could invest in women founded, women led companies and put your money where your mouth is. Choose all things considered, the woman-founded, woman-led company. Well, and, and what always baffles me when people are um, pro-life or pro-no-choice is that they're not more pro-birth control. Like, if we want to avoid abortion, then we have to educate people and give them birth control. Like, yes. Let's let's avoid that whole step if that's what the your end game is. Yeah, and if so if you it, want to decrease mm-hmm. abortion, give everybody birth control and comprehensive sex ed. Mm-hmm. You know, birth control and comprehensive free birth control. And thanks to Obama Biden under the Affordable Care Act, most insurances um, have no copay, no deductible for any FDA approved birth control method. So know that if you have insurance, you shouldn't be paying anything for your birth control unless you're specifically saying, I want this brand name when there's a mm-hmm. generic available and know that 95% of birth control pills are generic. So sometimes I have patients like, I only want this. And it's like, you know, that's actually a generic. So there's just like six other generics, you know, d- don't fight the system, you know, or know that you're gonna have to pay if you mm-hmm. want that specific brand, you know. What surprised you about the reaction from women who have been customers? I'm just so proud of what we've built at Pandia Health that our patient care associates, as we call them, um, provide such great service. So whenever I'm sad, I go to Google reviews and I read the reviews there because they're like, oh, thank you so much. You saved me time. Oh, I love, you know, the service. I love getting it in the mail and I love the free goodie. And so just the 
the amount of happiness, you know, that, that we've brought to women and people ask us to measure our impact. And I'm like, we are saving these women time going to the pharmacy. We are giving these women the best possible care by a birth control academic specialist. Um, that I think is, we know things that your doctor doesn't know. One phrase I like to do for, you know, to catch people is what your doctor doesn't know could end you up pregnant. And the specific <laughs> example is plan B and it's generics. If your BMI is 26 or greater, it doesn't work. It's as if you ate a Tic Tac, which again, doesn't work for preventing yeah. <laughs> unplanned pregnancy. So everybody who's thinking of using emergency contraception, please check your BMI. If it's 26 or greater, eh, Plan B is not for you. There's a prescription only emergency contraception, which we um, provide to our patients. We're like, do you want some emergency contraception with that? And it's called Ella. And that one, again, under the Affordable Care Act, if you have insurance, no copay, no deductible. If you don't have insurance, we have it at a quite reasonable price. I think it's like 40 or 50 bucks, better than an abortion, right? Better mm -hmm. than a vaginal delivery or C-section. And um, it works better at every time point and it works up to a BMI of 35. If your BMI is 35 or greater, your only hope is the IUD. And our doctors know that. Our doctors also know because I'm adolescent medicine and adolescent medicine is always worried about bones and nutrition that we're building our bone density until about 30, 35. And so until you're 30, we don't recommend less than 30 micrograms of estrogen. So whenever I give a talk on that, women look at the birth control pills and a bunch of them like, oh my God. 20 microgram. And I'm like, yeah, you need to be on a 30 microgram to protect your bones, unless you're already a big boned woman. But mm -hmm. even then, if you're a big bone woman, you actually require more estrogen to prevent pregnancy. So 30 micrograms of estrogen until you're 30. And then the last part is our secret sauce about race. I realized that, go, that what I'd been taught at UCSF and Stanford works for a Caucasian female that wants to bleed every single month. But for the rest of us, Asian, Black, Latina, or people who don't want to bleed every month after studying the progesterones. Change, I made a spreadsheet because I love spreadsheets. By <laughs> the dosage and the drug, finding the one with the least amount of male side effects, munchies, hairiness, depression, that kind of thing. And the one with the least amount of breakthrough bleeding found a better pill. And so at Pandia Health, we start you on this pill unless you're already on one that you like and then we'll just keep you where you're at. But if you're new and 90, 95% of our patients do great. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, there's so much controversy today about what, what is truth from doctors and from science. And it's super frustrating for everyone. And, you know, I've talked to my primary care doctor and, you know, I asked her about it and she went off for like 45 minutes, which I thought was amazing about, you know, what's true and what's not. And like all the, you know, nonsense is kind of going around. But we have to give space. And I love that you're talking about how you're the expert because there's always more to learn. There's always more data that everyone would love to have. And we have to remember that so often the information we're given is based on whatever research someone's done or had access to or bothered to look at. Mm -hmm. And for women, like we're better than men usually about going to the doctor and it's still something we have to do, right? So like yes. needing an expert and like we need a nutritionist, we need someone for reproductive health, we need to talk to a fertility doctor, like it can be so overwhelming. How easy is it for someone to call or email Pandia and start that process? Like, is it a multi-step process? Is it pretty simple? It's pretty easy. So it's asynchronous telemedicine and thanks to COVID, <laughs> everybody knows what asynchronous is. So you don't need a video, you don't need a phone, you just fill out 20 questions-ish, um, the same questions I'd ask you if you came into my office. Do you have breast mm -hmm. cancer? Do you have liver cancer? Do you smoke? Do you have any medical problems? You know, Do you have any clots? What drugs are you on? What's worked for you in the past? What are you on now? The same 20 questions. And this protocol has actually been approved by the state of California for pharmacists to prescribe birth control. So the medical board, pharmacy board, and the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology of California said, pharmacists can write using this protocol. And we added a layer of doctor on top of that. We also need a self-reported blood pressure. So if you've been to a doctor's office in the past 365 days, you can either get online and see what your blood pressure was or call them up and ask, or you can go into a pharmacy or a grocery store or use grandma, grandpa, or your mom or dad's blood pressure cuff. The one I like is um, fire station, hot fireman. 
but that's in a row, but whatever, you know, floats your boat. But go to the fire station, sit calmly for five minutes and check your blood pressure. They can do it as a service because they're all EMTs. Call ahead of time so that, you know, they don't get surprised or angry or anything like that. But, and then you pay us 20 bucks once a year, a total steal. At some point we need to jack that price up because doctors, as you know, if you were to go see me at Stanford, it'd be like 500 to 700 an hour. So 20 bucks once a year, and then you get unlimited follow-up questions about birth control. Not about asthma, not about acne. Mm -hmm. We're just here for birth control. We're not your primary care doctor. Do not come to us for primary care. Just about the pill that we prescribed you, (laughs) any issues that you have there unlimited. We have a HIPAA compliant chat. So only during the hours that we're open and you can always hit us up in general for information on our social, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube. Mm-hmm. Our blog has, um, our website has 120,000 hits each month because we have information from an academic physician who bases all our you know, information on evidence and science. And um, we also have the second Tuesday of every month at five o'clock Pacific in Espanol, Um, We call it TMI Tuesdays about some topic about birth control or sex or other stuff like that. And then at 5.30 Pacific time in English. So anytime you want to hit me up live, we'll be on Facebook, YouTube, the second Tuesday of every month. Very cool. So if we go back to eight-year-old you, would she have imagined that this is what you are doing today? Not eight-year-old me, but nine-year-old me, right? So I love to say I've always known that I wanted to be a a doctor because I love people and I love science. And my mom was a nurse and my favorite uncle was a doctor. So maybe it was just the wanting to do good and serve people. And um, the reason I say that is because I remember in fourth grade-ish, I was like, mom, you have to buy me three sheets of every sticker because it's not for me. It's for my future patient. So I got three (laughs) sheets of every sticker because it wasn't for me. It was for my future patient, but really it was for me. But scratch and sniff stickers, if you haven't experienced those, love those. And then as I grew along, um, I was, you know, 15 years old, sexually active, pre-med. And I was like, I cannot get pregnant. There's no way. uh, It's going to mess up my high school, college, and 0% of pregnancy. I I love Planned Parenthood. Let's figure out everything they can do and provide me. And it was absolutely about personal, you know, motivation, interest. I have the right to decide what happens to my body if anything happens because I'm going to be a doctor. And Mm -hmm. then liked OB-GYN, but then um, not so great with surgery. Don't like surgery. Don't like delivering the babies. Don't like the 3 a.m. call. And, but loved gynecology, loved birth control. And I found adolescent medicine where I could talk to young people before you start your habits of sex and mm-hmm. have you start from the beginning the right way with a thin condom, good sensation. I tell everybody, assume everybody has every disease under the sun and just mm-hmm. protect yourself and always use a condom. And then something hormonal, unless you're using the copper IUD or something like that, but the hormonal stuff works amazing for birth control. So hormones plus condom for STIs, but also just double more protection. And, and then, um, came upon this, this thing, what like the, one of the top reasons was because women didn't have it in their hand. And I was like, I could help people one-to-one. I can help people by teaching the next generation of doctors, which is what I was doing at Stanford as a clinical associate professor. And now I could affect everybody in the United States. And eventually we can go international as well. There's many people Mm -hmm. that have hit us up and I'm not going international, but I'm happy to franchise it or license it international because every country has their own medical and pharmacy system that I don't necessarily want to go there. Or maybe the next, you know, CEO of Candia Health would go there. Yeah. Are you available in all 50 states and territories? We can deliver to all Mm -hmm. 50 states. We can write the prescription in 14 states. I can't name all of them because there are too many now, but the major states, plus like Colorado, Nevada, Illinois, Pennsylvania, Michigan, the places where we thought there were a lot of college students, as well as um, we encourage birth control tourism. So if you're Mm -hmm. going to Disneyland, Disney World, Vegas, skiing in Colorado, whatever, and you physically are in a state that we can legally write the prescription, fill out the questionnaire, pay 20 bucks, and then we can ship it to all 50 states. That's a very interesting way to do it. 
Um, and I'm glad that you shared that pro tip. Um, <laughs> So as you are going into 2022, what are you excited about for yourself and for Pandia? I'm excited because we've put together this amazing team. Um, This year, we're going to focus on building Dr. Sophia Yen brand. And it's not about me, but it's like, that's what makes our company different is Mm -hmm. I like to say, as long as I'm CEO, we will always tell you what's best for your health even if it doesn't benefit our bottom line, because I've taken the do no harm, you know, pledge, but also that's Mm -hmm. my thing, you know? And so if you ask me what's the best birth control out there, IUD implant, but what can I give you? The pill, the patch, the ring, Mm because that's the only thing I can ship by mail. I cannot, I cannot go. Um, My favorite future is we would have a drone drop a robot and the robot be like, ding dong, spread them. (laughs) <laughs> and, put in IUD, and then the drone would pick up the robot and come back again or um, the implant maybe in the future i always like to say my 12 year old could put in the implant you just got to measure numb it up put it in and a bandage done for three years this is a great form of birth control but you have to go to somebody that can do it and mm-hmm. but maybe we can teach people you can learn a lot of things my husband has learned a lot of things on youtube so um, that may be part of the future Pandia Health, we are building the online health brand Women Trust, and we are going to expand into acne. I'm of the menopause age, so all my friends are like, menopause, 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 evidence-based, science-based, because there's some crazy stuff out there. And women need to know that if it's not FDA approved, there is no guarantee that what's in there is in there. And even if they have one research study, um, you got to be careful because it was sponsored by the company, so it's a little bit in that. Uh, 30% of the time placebo works. So maybe the placebo works, but at Pandia Health, we're going to give you stuff that's evidence-based, science-backed, or, you know, to the best of our known ability. My favorite question when I meet people is, what are you using, right? Mm -hmm. Because if it's good enough for you, the doctor or the practitioner, then it's good enough for me, right? Mm -hmm. But if you're not using it, then why are you telling me to use it, you know? And that's where it comes in that if you're not women-founded, women-led, doctor-led, they're not using it. It, Mm -hmm. It's nice that they're sympathetic or they're here to make money off you, but they don't personally go through this. And so I made this company for me, for my menopause needs and my birth control needs. I made this company for my two daughters. So I have an interest until my 12-year-old becomes menopausal and beyond and um, anybody with a uterus. So if the others were doing it at the level that I like and that I want and that I expect, I would step aside. But I'm not seeing that out there uniformly, especially in the birth control area. So that's why Pandia has to exist. And you touched on it briefly earlier, but I'd love to go a little bit more in depth on how birth control can truly empower every woman. So number one, the number one cause of missed school and work under the age of 25, bad, evil periods. You treat that with quote, birth control, hormonal treatment, and that will, inc- that will improve attendance, school, and I think sport. And I like to pitch as a tiger mom of a 12 and a 15-year-old, my 15-year-old is going to crush your 15-year-old on the SAT, on <laughs> soccer, on volleyball, and band practice, on every exam. And the example I give specifically is imagine pre-med, MIT, biochem final, all of a sudden, bleh, and you're like, ha, 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 do I run to the bathroom or do I finish the exam? And the answer, you all know deep in your heart, pre-med, you finish the exam. That's the answer, <laughs> but it's not cool. And then I look to my left, I look to my right, two people without uteri, MIT, and not a care in the world. And what Mm -hmm. did I were they? I want to give my daughters that equal playground. I don't want Mm -hmm. them hit randomly out of four with blood or suffering. And they've actually shown that iron deficiency before anemia, um, if you give those people iron, they do better in math and they have a higher IQ. And so we as women being bloodlet every single month, uh, 350 to 400 times in our lives are, I think, iron deficient. And so if we stop that bloodletting, it would we could perform better in so many things. And certainly I don't want to say women are inferior in any way because I love the shirt that says, I can do everything you do, bleeding. But my thing (laughs) is, why do I have to? We have the technology to do that. And then what woman would have gotten through high school, college, 
higher education without birth control. You literally have to be a saint and you are absolutely in denial if you don't realize that 50, 45% of high school seniors have had sex. Mm -hmm. That's just the reality. And if you take birth control away, it shows that they don't stop having sex. They just have riskier sex that results in unplanned pregnancy and abortion. A percentage of that, not 100%, it's a percentage. So if you want to decrease abortion, please, sex ed, free birth control, and ask your elected officials, follow your values as well, and freedom of religion. That is my pitch. You would not (laughs) want my mom, the Buddhist, running this country because none of us could eat meat. And then there are things about worms and ants you can't step on and houses you can't build theoretically. So your body, your religion, your house, your religion, my body, my religion, stay out of my bedroom, stay out of my body. Yeah. (laughs) When you think of the t- term powerful ladies, do the words powerful and ladies mean something different to you when they're separate? And does the definition change when they're combined together? I like powerful ladies because I'm all about women's empowerment. That is the whole mm-hmm. Pandia thing, right? Um, when I think powerful, I think most of us, when we envision powerful, we envision a man because they're the ones that are still running this country. When I look at panels, it's always mantles, right? And even then they'll have one woman, but we are 50% of the population. And so every boardroom, every CEO, every company, we should be 50%. And I've seen this in other countries where they mandate like 10% or 50%. I think California just mandated a specific percentage for women. And I was like, 10% is not enough. I want an equivalent to what our percentage is, you know, of the stockholders or, uh, but even then that's biased, right? Women have Mm -hmm. often been stay at home and we don't get the money and the dudes have the money. So the dudes are technically the stakeholders, but we should have 50%. And again, love California because we do get 50% in the divorce, but not every state is that way. And, and so, um, I I'd say we are currently in a state when you think powerful, you envision a dude, right? We need a woman president. We need more women CEOs. And so again, please put your money where your mouth is and support women CEOs, but also women founded, women led. Watch out for this women washing phenomenon we're seeing. But I'm happy that they swapped it for a woman CEO, but know the difference of a company that was founded and led by a woman versus one that came later. When you look at the women in your life, how many powerful ladies have inspired you and gotten you to where you are today? And who's someone that you'd like to highlight? (laughs) That is um, so many, right? We always say we stand on the shoulders of those that have come before us. So I'm Mm -hmm. absolutely uh, thankful for my mother who has always, (laughs) as I started this with, claim your titles, you know, and both my parents, because they're like, you can do anything you want as long as you work hard towards. And that's really what I tried to um, push with sheheroes.org, a nonprofit that my sorority sister dragged me into co-founding, as well as um, for anybody with a uterus, tell your young daughter that she's smart and can accomplish anything she works hard towards and that she's beautiful. And that will you know, protect her, hopefully, in this world. Um, the women I want to give a shout out to de- most, because I have her book on my table, is um, Arlen Hamilton. Thank you for investing in um, underrepresented people in the VC world. Without you, you know, it, it would be less. I want to give a shout out to my Springboard Enterprise people, specifically Amy Millman and um, Ms. Koplik. These are women that have started organizations to make sure women entrepreneurs succeed. And all of my Springboard Enterprise sisters um, for helping me and supporting me, as well as CEO. Certainly Vicki Saunders, who's the founder, and um, sh- without her, it wouldn't exist. And um, Women's Startup Lab, Ari Hori, um, just so many women and doctors out there that I've you know, followed in their footsteps until I came into entrepreneurship. In terms of women mm-hmm. entrepreneurs, all of the billionaire unicorn ladies that are nice, um, <laughs> but I do want to give a shout out to Kara, Kara Golden, of Hint. I always have Hint around as an obesity expert. I suggest Hint. It's a great thing. No artificial anything and zero calories. 
Um, I'm also a huge fan of Farm Girl Flowers. Um, that's mm-hmm. another company by women for women and has a story behind it. Stitch Fix, Spanx, you know, oh, of course, Oprah and, you know, Ellen. And my new favorite is Reese Witherspoon and mm-hmm. love Drew Barrymore. Um, Shonda, right? Um, yeah. Shonda's amazing. So just so many amazing. Oh, well, of course, Michelle Obama, Hillary Clinton, Gloria Steinem, um, love Ms. Magazine. If you all don't know, it still exists. Subscribe. They have good stuff there. <laughs> um, yeah. So many women and you, thank you for having me on this show. You're my pleasure. I just feel really lucky that we're in an age when there are so many women that you could list. Because, you know, when I was growing up, I was always told women were powerful. You know, like there was Shira was a cartoon and Gem in the Skanky Holograms. looking. Like, yes, but badass. Yes. And so the idea that women could do things was being like it was showing up in, in my childhood. Um, but seeing women actually doing the work out in the world was limited. And I love now that you see women doing the work and you see women doing it their way. Um, so I think for so long, it was like having to do it the way the men did it. And it's like, why? Like we, that's, that would be inauthentic for some people. So I'm glad that there are women like you out there who are so passionate and just see the issue and like, we're fixing that. That's how my brain works. I'm like, that's dumb. We're going to fix that. Yes. <laughs> so yes. to see other women um, like you doing that, it's it reminds me that there are um, there are women, whether we see them or know them, who we are shoulder to shoulder with, who are out there taking big leaps and fighting the fight um, every day and how they just live their lives. And I'm so glad that we've had this conversation about Reminding women that we cannot let this issue of reproductive rights and um, birth control go away because it, it is so risky. And um, I never thought we would have, I never thought in my lifetime Roe v. Roe v. Wade would be an issue again. Mm-hmm. So I'm wondering why we're going backwards because we got other things to tackle. <laughs> and I'm like, hasn't this already been decided? Like, I, I'm shocked that it's it's a conversation again. So it is going backwards. We should need to go forward. This is just mm-hmm. crazy, crazy talk. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, as what else would you like to let everyone know as we're wrapping up? Anything exciting for you or any other words of wisdom? Um, if you want to see my TEDx talk on hashtag periods optional, please go to pandiahealth.com forward slash <laughs> periods optional. Please follow us on all of our social media (laughs) and send all people with money my way that want to invest in our company. Um, And yeah, uh, I also did start um, a small project. It's called full.co because I wanted our heart full, the sky full, and it's ffl.co, female founded, female led, And it lists female-founded, female-led companies. There's many different other organizations like that as well. But please shop female-founded, female-led companies and spread the word. I love it. Well, we ask everyone on the podcast where they put themselves on the powerful lady scale. Zero being average everyday human and 10 being the most powerful lady you can imagine. Where would you put yourself on that scale today? I'm definitely not 10 because if I, if I were, I would be on the Supreme Court or I would balance the Supreme Court and I would stop this ridiculousness with Roe v. Wade. Um, also not 10 because I'm not president of the United States or do I have many followers on social media? <laughs> so, um, but being the Asian in me, I cannot go lower than a B. So I'm going with an eight. Um, I like to tell people I have enough confidence for three people. And that's because my parents, they, they put mm-hmm. it in me. But also my husband is, is such a cheerleader. He's my number one cheerleader. And he is sometimes more feminist than I. And I, I love it. Well, it's been such an honor to meet you and talk to you today and just share your powerful message. I can't wait to hear how everyone listening um, reacts to it. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for this opportunity.
All the links to connect with Dr. Sophia Yen and Pandia Health are in our show notes at thepowerfulladies.com. Please subscribe to this podcast wherever you're listening and leave us a rating and review. They're critical for podcast visibility and to help us connect with more listeners like you. Come join us on Instagram at Powerful Ladies. And if you're looking to connect directly with me, visit caraduffy.com or Kara underscore Duffy on Instagram. I'll be back next week with a brand new episode and an amazing new guest. Until then, I hope we're taking on being powerful in your life. Go be awesome and up to something you love.